What's going on, guys? I'm here with Ali. She Hello. grew up in a religious cult. She was indoctrinated into the vegan cult, vegetarian for three years, vegan for one and a half years. And mm -hmm. she had a recent interaction with Zverage that she <laughs> is looking forward to sharing with you guys. So I'm going to let her take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. I'm really excited to be on this channel. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm really pumped about this. But yeah, uh, basically... I grew up in a religious cult, um, and I got out when I was about 20 years old. And after that, um, I was put on a bunch of medication. Um, I struggled with some health issues early on in my life, but um, I think that that was partly due to trauma. I had also been put on a bunch of antibiotics when I was little, so my gut had always kind of been a mess, but trauma will also make you really, really sick. Um, but obviously, I really know I've spent 10 plus years healing from that cult experience, so um, I really know the ins and outs of it, and I've been attracted to cult-like mentality ever since. So that's kind of like a life thing of mine, um, is to work through that stuff. So I was put on medication right after that, um, Adderall, benzos, uh, and antidepressants, and that completely wrecked my body, obviously, um, and didn't help anything. Um, so after I got off that, I ended up going to rehab um, because of all of that, and um, uh, after rehab... I had healed a lot emotionally, but my body was still physically a mess and I had put on some weight. Um, and so I really just wanted to lose weight is, is, is the main thing. And then I found, um, I think the first person I found was freely, of course, classic. And, um, I found freely and I was like, oh my God, I want that body. So, um, I followed some of her juice cleansing stuff and fully raw Christina. Like the first video I saw of hers was the whole, like changing her eye color thing. Um, so I found them and then I did a potato cleanse, found high carb Hannah. Um, that was a super weird experience. So but I'm basically, just curious, I'm sorry, yeah. you were, you were, this is like you being vegetarian, just experimenting with stuff. No. So, um, th yeah. So after rehab, basically I went vegan overnight. I was vegan first. So if oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So I remember the night I found those videos, um, it was literally overnight. So, um, I found freely and then I kind of started experimenting, but I saw cowspiracy as well, um, was the first night that I found all this stuff. And just like a lot of people, you start binging and you think that you found the solution to the world and you get and start getting cult indoctr indoctrinated, you know, that I don't think that's a real term, but you start to become indoctrinated into the mindset. Um, so I thought that I had found the answer. Um, and that is also a very cult like thing. Um, and so I went vegan first. And so I started doing juice cleanses, um, potato cleanses, making crazy huge smoothies. I was eating, you know, pounds of nice cream per day, that kind of thing. Um, classic. And I did that for about six months. That was what I did at first. I got a super nasty ear infection. Um, after I first went vegan and I just could not heal from it, it was crazy. I ended up kind of having to have surgery. Like my body just could not heal. And I went on a ton of antibiotics. So I think that that also did more damage to my gut that was already there. Um, and I really believed that if I just detoxed enough, you know, of course. Detox, that... <laughs> boys. <laughs> detox detox to the grave. <laughs> detox to the grave. Yes. No, seriously. That's what it is. And, and that's part of the cult like mentality too, is like, the more you, you throw suffer, up your liver and you shit out your colon. Yeah, <laughs> literally, you know, I wanted to get that mucoid plaque baby. Like that was the whole, that was the whole goal is to like poop out all that stuff. Um, so yeah. And then of course I found Dr. Morse. Um, you know, I just really got in it and like, um, and then I did that for about six months and then I got into a relationship and, uh, you know, that was not healthy at all. Narcissist there, codependent here. Those two things are super attracted to each other. And um, his diet was super, super bad. And I was really unhappy. And so, like, I just couldn't keep it up anymore. I couldn't keep up just 12 mangoes a day. I couldn't. Um, so that's when I technically went vegetarian. But I was really vegan that whole year and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I know people are going to bash me and say, like, oh, you didn't do it right. Or, like you know, you weren't really in it. If you ate cheese for a while, like freely would, you know, slaughter me, but I really don't care. It's all about the mindset. The whole time, the mindset, I was super vegan, <laughs> you know, like anytime I consumed cheese, the amount of guilt that I felt was unreal. And I think that that cortisol probably did more stress to my body than the cheese could have ever done. But, um, so then for a year and a half, 
I would be, it was like, I was always gearing up. I was always detoxing, always gearing up. And then I would have these nights where I just couldn't take it anymore, the starvation. And I would binge on cheese and grains. I really tried to stay away from grains a lot because grains make me feel really sick. So I would be raw for as long as I could possibly take it. And then I'd go get like egg rolls and, uh, you know, make quesadillas and stuff and eat all the vegan junk food that I could get my hands on. Um, so you had or, this or, belief that raw foods were like healthier inherently or something? Like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, cook, cooked kills. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know, the whole Durian Rider. Um, I got really into Life Regenerator, you know, and he really, um, now when I watch his videos, I'm like, oh, no, like he's pretty, anyways, um, yeah, I, and Dr. Morse, like Dr. Morse was probably the one I resonated with the most. And Can you just sum up Dr. Morse for anyone who's just unfamiliar? Yeah, so Dr. Robert Morse, I do not believe he's a real doctor, first of all, <laughs> let me put that out there. I didn't find that out because I didn't do any real research, bottom line. You know, and when somebody calls themselves a doctor and claims that they've healed hundreds of thousands of people, I don't think he's claimed that, but Dr. thousands. Dr. Frankie boy is here. Dr. Frank Tufano. Um, yeah, you should start calling yourself that. Maybe. Issues, right? <laughs> um, the realities of that. Yeah, yeah. So Dr. Morris is this guy down in Florida. Um, he has a clinic. And doctor of floor attending. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doctors of the gin and tonics um so he has a clinic down in florida and basically he um uh, yeah i mean they it's fruit mary berries melons so he will cure anything with fruits berries melons and um supposedly has cured all this stuff he's also the one that convinced me that fruit sugar is not sugar he has a a whole debate that i would send people i sent people with cancer this debate no joke three or four who all died I don't know if they followed it or not. Uh -oh. No, I'm dead serious. And I gave people with cancer Dr. Michael Greger's book. Okay? That makes me sad. But, um, yeah, so he heals with fruits, berries, melons. His whole thing is the lymphatic system, lymphatic draining. Um, and apparently he, you know, and also um, fi kidney filtration. So those are his big things. And, you know, with a detoxing with him, it goes on for years and years and years. He's super into iridology. You know, um, yeah, 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 and stuff. yeah, and like I was convinced that I had mucus in my brain and vaccines lodged in my brain oh, and um, and that if I just kept eating fruits, berries and melons that eventually, you know, that I would eventually reach uh, salvation, you know, <laughs> vegan salvation. I even I even did urine therapy for a little bit. A lot of Dr. Morse's. I know. I know. And I, told I usually, you I mean, I usually pay girls, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, if you didn't know it has stem cells in it and it'll regrow all your skin. So <laughs> that's what they told me. Um, like that guy, Sean Walsh, you know, basically I had a job where I could, um, I could watch YouTube videos all day. And so that's what I did. And I would like get out of my headphones. I'm like, you guys, you got to hear about this urine therapy. It's going to save all of our lives. Um, so yeah, I was deep in it and I just kept detoxing and kept um you know i just always there was always like a pinnacle to meet which is also a mindset of cult mentality it's like the more you suffer uh the more holy you are right and 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 there's people who've supposedly met that and they probably really have it and they probably eat regular stuff in the meantime which has been said about dr morse before um and so it just became this like super guilt cycle where like i couldn't keep up um, I started, I'll just go into my symptoms that I had. Um, I did have like anemia. Um, I had, um, sorry, this one note just says 12 mangoes a day. And I, I don't say mangoes. I say mangoes because I just like that. But, um, that's pretty much what I was eating is like a bunch of mangoes. And, um, I was super, super dizzy. I started getting really bad heart palpitations. Um, I was like driving for a lift at the time to make extra money. And I remember like, I would literally have these like moments when I was on high fruit where I would feel this like boom in my heart and my whole like my whole nervous system would feel like it was crinkling up or something. And then I would black out for maybe 10 seconds. And I had a passenger in my car. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right. And my mom, I remember calling my mom after one of them and she's like, Allie, you have to eat. And I was like, what are you talking about? I need to detox more. These are detox symptoms. And if I can just get through it 
Like I could have killed someone in my car, you know, it was bad. I would be at work and, and have the same thing happen. And people would be, and people would ask, you know, are you okay? And, and I mean, everyone around me, same thing as a cult, everyone around me knew like that I was suffering. I didn't look well. I mean, and, and they were all very scared, but I think they were also interested. Like, holy crap, this girl, you know, we'll see what happens. I was kind of the guinea pig. So um, I could only digest fruit by the end. Um, I was sick all the time. I got everything that came through. I had cold sores all the time, insomnia. I couldn't sleep. I started, um, I was using marijuana a lot at the time. Sorry, my cat's eating something weird. That's why I was looking there. I started, I was using a ton of marijuana at the time because I, that was the only way I could sleep. Um, and so I would just knock myself out with edibles. I was peeing like 15 or six. No, like that's a huge exaggeration. Five or six times a night. I almost said 15 or 16. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Five or six times a night. Um, what else? Headaches, extreme bloat. The biggest thing is that I gained so much weight. Like I already was a little bit overweight, but I'd say in that year and a half I gained, or in that three years, I gained about 30 or 35 pounds. And the bloat, like I just had this belly, like I was just this huge beer drinker. Um, and it was so uncomfortable and my stomach hurt all the time. Um, and I developed leaky gut, really, really bad candida. So um, vegan for six months, then for a year and a half, I was essentially vegan, but about once a month or every two months I would binge. Then after that, I, so after that, a year and a half is when that relationship ended. That's just, helps me with the timeline. And after that, I was like, all right, I'm going to lose some weight and I'm going to really do it this time. I'm going to really detox. I'm going to, I'm going to get in there. I wanted to do a water fast. You know, I wanted to go to a clinic. I wanted to go to Dr. Morse's school. He has a school where he teaches people how to do his whole program, which mind you, uh, when he tells the story about how he figured out about kidney filtration, it's basically that he was sitting in a van for, uh, he was living in a van in the woods because he was so poor and he was only eating oranges because that's all he could afford. And he peed into this jar and there was sediment. And so that's how he figured out about kidney filtration. <laughs> OK, like, ugh, you know, um, and but the whole thing is, is like the only reason someone ever becomes a part of a cult is because is because they came from something worse, right? And so many people are so scared of the medical industry now and Western medicine and that kind of stuff. And I get it, like that was me. Like I have been put on all that prescription medication. They had never been able to figure out what was wrong with my health, um, misdiagnosed me in a million ways. And, and so it makes sense. You wanna believe it. You want this folk medicine to be real, you know? And, and so the only reason you join something like that is because you're coming from something else. So. It totally makes sense. Um, but this time I'm actually doing my research because I learned. Um, so, yeah. So then uh, I got really deep into that. And then how I got back to me. Um, and I just want to say to any girls out there who are struggling with the weight stuff and you think that that veganism, A, will save your life and B, will make you skinny. Like some people do get really skinny on it, but... <clears throat> Now I'm much skinnier, right? And you you idolize these people like freely and high carb and stuff. And and not only may it not make you skinnier, but my mental health deteriorated so much. Like I was starting to become quite delusional, um, especially towards the end on high fruit. And and the biggest thing is like if you lose 20 or 30 pounds, you're still the same person. It doesn't automatically mean that it's going to be raining men and you're and you feel so much better about yourself you have to work on the mental stuff and from my experience not eating meat I was not there fully mentally so even if you lose all the weight it, it's not going to do for you what you think it's going to do you have to have the mental component um in there and you can get caught in these vicious vicious mental cycles of guilt of detoxing of it was always like day three of my grape cleanse and it just wasn't healthy, you know, it wasn't healthy. That's another thing I did were grape cleanses. I told a girl with breast cancer to do a 40 day grape cleanse and that it would. <laughs> Why and grapes? I believed it. Why grapes? Because they're the, because Dr. Mo I don't even want to call him a doctor because what's his name? Uh, says that they are the most um, astringent of the fruits. And so what he says is that if you stick to just grapes, no water for 40 days, 
that it will drain your lymphatic system and that the tumors like will eventually go away. Cause his whole thing is tumors are lymphatic backup. And so if you eat grapes for 40 days, it will eventually, you'll pee out the tumors essentially. It'll break it down and you'll pee them out. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a non-internal medicine doctor, but that sure. doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> right. And that's a, that's a crap ton of sugar. <laughs> right? Like that's a lot. If you're only eating. Yeah. So, um, I just think there's a lot of people probably who have been trying to follow a vegan diet. And there's so many people, so many people that I meet nowadays who aren't even following a vegan diet. They feel the guilt. They're like, well, we're destroying the planet. You know, one, one meat Sammy at a time. Yeah. Those cow parts <laughs> really burning a hole in the ozone. It's like they're burning a hole in my brain. Uh, so yes. Um, so I think that this guilt that is being spread and the fear mongering and like, you know, I was so convinced. Um, and so then basically what I did was, um, I was so, so sick and somebody had told me about, um, a live blood analysis. So I went and got one of those done, um, which I've done some research on the validity, validities of those tests. And I don't know about that, but it got me on the right track. And, um, at first she had tried to convince me to eat meat and I just cried. I just cried. I was eating 40 or 50 bananas a week and I had no potassium in my blood. That's insane. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> no potassium. Um, I read somewhere that a Reese's peanut butter cup has more potassium than a banana. Anyways, who knows if that's true or not. <laughs> but um, so my blood work was a total mess. That's where I found out that I had leaky gut um, candida, my blood was just stuck together, all this different stuff. She convinced me to eat meat, um, after a few months, but I just cried because I had been so indoctrinated in this idea that meat is the devil and that it was going to cause cancer and that you have only acid or alkaline. You know, I was also drinking just gallons of alkaline water thinking like, okay, if I, if I get enough alkaline water, my cells cannot become acidic. Not how it works, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> For those of you guys yeah. that don't know, the stomach is acidic and it will always try to maintain an acidic pH. Mm -hmm. And the blood is always slightly alkaline. It will always try to maintain the alkalinity. I think it's 7.4 to 7.7 .7 for the, uh, the blood alkalinity and the stomach pH is usually around 1.5 to 2, but it can be as high as 3.5 as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Um, she also said that because I was drinking such purified and, al and alkaline water um, that like I had like zero minerals my mineral content was like crazy low. She was like, you have to go get some spring water. Like this whole thing is just a total fad. Um, so that was really interesting to me. And I felt a huge difference. Like I was drinking gallons of that stuff, like at least a gallon a day of the alkaline water um, and spending, you know, $5 on a gallon of it or $6. Like that's, <laughs> wow. That's Smoke amazing. A pack of cigarettes, huh? <laughs> screw, the, screw the water. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, and then I started um, eating a little bit of meat, very high veg. She was like, how much sugar are you eating? And I was like, literally none, except for maybe 17 oranges yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and she was, like, she was like, oh, honey. <laughs> like, and so she showed me, she was like, see all those crystals? She's like, that's all undigested sugar that's going straight into your bloodstream. And I was just shocked. And... Um, because I was so convinced that fruit sugar was not sugar. Um, so I immediately cut out. She only let me have one lemon a day because she wanted me to do the lemon water, you know, which I don't do anymore. Um, but at least this got me started on the right track. I remember the first time I ate meat afterwards and I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, I'm a grilling machine these days. <laughs> I marinate my meat every morning. Like it's, it's great. Um, some good, some good stuff. Oh, Yes. And I'm so, I'm so good at it now. Um, I'm just a grill, grill master. Um, so yeah, I started eating more meat, started feeling a lot better. I was high veg, little meat. Um, and then I came across, um, no, I met this guy at, um, at a coffee shop. I didn't meet him. He works there and, um, I did meet him there. And so he works at a coffee shop and he, we were talking about it cause he was, uh, raw vegan for three years and lost a bunch of teeth. And his wife uh, gained like a ton of weight and is having major, major health issues after they went raw vegan. 
Um, and they were full blown for three years. Um, and he is like missing teeth on this side, teeth on this side. And his teeth were that transluc translucent color. And so he's like, hey, have you heard of this carnivore diet? And I was like, what? No, because we would go back and forth about health stuff. And um, he's like, yo, dude, I don't know. This is crazy. But like these people are cutting out plants. And I was like, OK, your guys are so crazy. Like there's no way like plants are the best thing ever. Um, how could you ever do that? Whatever. And so then I went home and listened to, he told me about Sean Baker, but, um, listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. And then I just got deep in it. I saw a video by Daphne reloaded. And I was just like, it's like, it's really like when I left the cult, when I left the cult that I grew up in, you all of a sudden the world looks different and you're like, I've been <laughs> lied to for so long. And the, just the sheer idea even if you were never even the vegan cult, this idea that maybe vegetables aren't all that they're cracked up to be or that a lot of them are, you know, hybridized, man-made, <clears throat> all this stuff is just so, so counterintuitive. Um, but so then I just got deep in. And that's where I found Sverige. Sferia is, is how he says his name, but we're going to say Sverige because it's easier and makes more sense. Um, <clears throat> and we'll get to that in a second. Um, so, yeah. That, and that's how I came to what I'm doing now. And I've been having really amazing results, but I'm also, um, I've been without plants for maybe two months and it's wonderful. Um, steak, bacon, eggs all day, baby. Like that's what I'm doing. And I've lost so much weight and my skin looks better and my addiction stuff. Like I just, it's so, it's crazy what's happened. And I'm doing real research this time. I'm not just going to listen to all the YouTubers. Like I'm doing my own real research um and it's making a lot of sense so go ahead i just would like a timeline because you know we did have mm -hmm. i mean 20 minute story let's just just, yeah. just block it up in like 30 seconds so okay you started as a vegan you went vegetarian you went back to vegan hi bro that, was, that yeah. was over the course of about four and a half years right three years yeah three years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so it was um, yeah, so it was like six or seven months vegan, a year and a half vegan with some cheese binges and then another year. So yeah. What is that? Yeah. About three so, years. So you were really craving cheese, but what stopped you from eating cheese for that last year? I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to, was, okay. and I wanted to detox. Like I wanted to seriously D do it. I just, T O X. Cleanse it, baby. Get all that stuff out. I really was convinced that I had vaccines in my brain and mucus and like, and that if I could just fully cleanse myself, then I would be saved. You know, I so, feel like I got vaccines in my brain after listening to this. So, <laughs> so how long ago so, did you actually discover the carnivore diet? Um, About two and a half so, months. So this is very recent. This is pretty recent for you. So mm -hmm. uh, can you just touch briefly on, I mean, obviously, you know, you said you had fainting, weight gain, bloating. Uh, you know, what other health problems did you have from the vegan diet and what have you noticed in your, you know, your short period of time on carnivore? Um, yeah, so it was basically the, on the vegan diet, it was the insomnia, the peeing all night, the addiction stuff. Like I was just always craving something, the freezing, um, the starving, the guilt, um, uh, the leaky gut and all, and the candida, those were like the main symptoms. And then the heart palpitations. I also developed this really weird breathing thing where I like could not breathe. Catch your breath. Catch your breath yeah. Yes. Yes. And it was like, it was really, really scary. And nobody could tell me what was going on. And, um, and so that, so as soon as I went carnivore, um, so when I started eating meat and I saw that lady with the live blood analysis, she also put me on like a crazy herbal protocol. So I was still ingesting just insane amounts of plants. Um, and I found out that they weren't sort of sourced from good places. So, um, she, so I was on low meat, high veg with about 90 herbs a day. Yeah. So that I found out are coming from like not good places. So, um, so then I, about a month and a half into that, I found carnivore and I just immediately started trying it. Um, and overnight I slept through the night. I stopped peeing so much. I was peeing maybe like once a night. Um, my addiction type stuff went away. Cravings for marijuana, cravings for, I had stopped drinking a while back. Um, cravings for food, craving for sugar, cravings for, uh, carbs. Like it was just immediate. And I just dropped this belly my belly just went away. 
oh, that's the best feeling ever. Um, my skin, oh, my skin started to look more alive. Sorry, someone called me. Um, my skin started to look more alive and full. Um, I got color in my face. Um, I mean, it was pretty amazing. And then about two weeks into that, um, I think it was because I'm, I was ingesting all those herbs. I'm not really sure. Um, and I started to have really rude reactions to the herbs. So now I've stopped taking the herbs and I'm going to go and just try this for 30 to 60 days and see what happens because I am having such good results. And the biggest thing is, is the addiction stuff. Like I don't, I mean, I've always struggled and felt like I needed something and, and now I feel so satiated and so full for the first time in my mm -hmm. life. And my body's just, I can't work out right now because I have this nasty neck injury, so I can only walk. And I lost like 15 or 20 pounds. Well, I probably like 15 pounds and all the bloat just, just in the last two months. And my body all of a sudden is just taking shape and my tummy looks good. And like, mm -hmm. it's like I'm developing muscles without even, or, you know, it's just, it's coming back. My body's falling into what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And it's, it's about every every single girl I've done a couple most of my ex vegan interviews have been with women who have gone from vegan or vegetarian to carnivore and their mm -hmm. their body composition their lean body mass just improves drastically and they're not even working out no definitely definitely something to be said about the nutrient and macronutrient requirement you know really yeah. just to be in optimal health and uh, the anxiety like I've woken up every day in my life with anxiety the first two weeks on carnivore I woke up just with this calm and I think the herbs really started to mess that up. So I'm really in anxious to see. And that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about um, on, on my channel is like, is, is show like the, the anxiety, the sense of doom. Like I've never experienced re uh, release from that. So if that can happen overnight, I'm in. From vegan I'm cults in. to carnivore cults. Yes. And then I wanted to just go through really quick, if it's okay, um, just these little bullet points about like why veganism is a cult and the veganjelicals. Mm -hmm. So um, just really quick, it's like, cause I love that term veganjelicals cause that's really what happens in evangelical Christ Christian cults or whatever. It's like, um, you know, and obviously a cult is very different than just a Christian church. So I'm not bashing them. It's a very different situation like the one I grew up in. But there you have this idea of like this saved mentality. Like I can, I have to be saved. I have to save everyone else. You walk around the grocery store with this half elitist attitude and half like you, we're, we need to save the planet and we need to save, if you eat that, you're going to get cancer and Alzheimer's and, you know, you have to tell everyone about it. And that's such an evangelical thing. Um, and people follow it to the point where they're hurting their own bodies and their children's bodies and like. They're always trying to attain this thing that the quote unquote leaders have. And then you meet the leaders and they're full of shit <laughs> and they don't have it either, you know? Um, and then it takes over your entire life. Everything is seen through a vegan, vegan lens, right? It's hard to date people who aren't vegan, hard to be friends with people who aren't vegan. It takes over your entire life. Um, you only matter within the confines of that group. So if you leave, you were never a vegan, you're damned to hell, you're not a person anymore, you only matter in that box. That's such a cult-like mentality. And if you if you stray at all, then it, you're not right and you're not saved. Um, <clears throat> and you can never really reach salvation or detox. There's always more. There's always more. And the more you suffer, the more holy you are. And leaving something like that is legitimately the same experience as I had when I left the Christian cult. Um, you're so confused. You don't know what to do. <laughs> you feel like you've been lied to. Um, and the indoctrination is so deep. So I could only eat bacon for like six weeks because just the texture of thick meat, even though bacon's so good. Um, I'm eating a lot of it now. Um, you know, even just putting meat in your mouth. I have people who live above me and this girl is having some major, major, major health issues. She's been vet, ve vegan for 10 years. And she was like, Allie, I just don't. She's like, I could never put meat in my mouth. Never. Well, you know? I can't say the same about New York City girls, but what I can say is. <laughs> that I knew that was going to be bad. <laughs> What, what I can say is that, you know, you, ne you never hear this thing about like keto dieters or paleo dieters. You know, you never yeah. hear these people upset that people are no longer paleo or keto. They said, oh, you know, it just didn't work for them uh, yeah. or, or whatever. And then they go on to do other yeah. things. It's not, you know, you could just tell the response that vegans have. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so speaking of carnivore cult. Yes. Uh, 
Yes, let's move on. <laughs> we should get into the next story. Uh, yeah, we could. Yeah, I think we've touched on everything for the most part. Yeah, yeah. If you have any other questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's my experience with that. And things are a lot better now. So um, once I had done all that, I, I found a uh, spirit. And at first, I remember thinking like, okay, this guy, I, I remember thinking he's just as bad as, as vegans. And then I started, so I was pretty turned off by that. Um, but then I started watching the ex-vegan interviews and, and really enjoyed it. And, and there's times that he comes across sincere. And he has, I just want to preface this, you know, I'm the one like I contacted Frank because I wanted like a platform to tell the story on and um and I really enjoy the way that he delivers in his videos and stuff and so um and so I just wanted to tell the story not to bash him because I don't want to act like that. This is not to bash Sverage at all. This is not to discredit him. this is not <laughs> I think he's doing that already on his own. Um but this isn't to bash him. This is to get some information out there that I think is really important. I just wanted to preface with that. Um, so basically, uh, you know, I'd seen the ex vegan videos and I thought how cool it would be to tell my own story. I've also always wanted to start a YouTube channel. I have all this footage from when I was vegan that maybe I'll post someday. It's crazy. I'm like, I'm on day three of this salt flush. And I'm like, <laughs> I was watching them. I look so sick. And I'm like so, so sick. Um, oh, I used to drink, you know, pound a whole thing of alkaline water with like, I don't even know how much salt. It was just terrifying. Um, sometimes it would get stuck in there too, which was horrible. My name, um, you have the salt flush. My blood is 72% <laughs> acidic. That's funny. I don't funny. know why I'm having heart palpitations and I can't breathe. <laughs> I should probably eat some mangoes. Um, or maybe like a whole pack of dates. That was another thing, you know, a whole, whole thing of dates because hey, dates are the super fun. Fine. fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, so nice cream is freaking delicious though. I just have to say that. Um, okay. Can you tell people what nice cream is for those of you? Yeah, absolutely. So nice cream is where you, um, it's banana ice cream essentially. So you um, freeze a bunch of bananas and you get like a nice, nice blender, you know, like a Vitamix or a food processor. I love when you talk about how Vitamixes like are the most unnatural thing. Like I never, ever thought about that until I watched your videos. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, duh. Like you never could blend stuff up like that in nature and add all this stuff. When some, when I heard that kale wasn't a superfood, I was, or you know, what it, what it contains. I was like, do you know how much of that I've shoveled down my throat thinking it was so good? So you take the you take the frozen bananas. It's baby food. Them. We don't have to touch it. It's baby food. It's okay. <laughs> we're, good. we're good. Let's uh... like, Yeah. So you blend up the you blend up the bananas, you add dates, a ton of other sugar, cherries, and it comes out this beautiful soft serve. So I would eat oh, that for sounds compelling. lunch, lunch and dinner. And thinking I was doing so good. And my whole body, I just got the feeling again talking about it. My your body, I remember the sugar rush, you know, going through my whole body. Um, so back to Sparage. Um, so I've always wanted to start my own YouTube channel. And I thought to myself, uh, you know, what better what better way to get started than to go do a an ex vegan interview with him? So I had contacted him and he was gonna be in Arizona, like you guys have probably seen recently. Um, I'm the ex-vegan from Colorado that he's referring to in his videos. Um, so I contacted him and he immediately contacted me back and I and I was like, you should come out to Boulder. That's where I live in Colorado. Um, and he said that was just too far. So I was like, you know what? I found a cheap ticket online. I looked at it as like an investment into my own channel. Um, and I was like, let's do it. Like, let's go have some fun. Um, and I thought it would be really cool. He hooked me up. I was going to maybe stay, stay in an Airbnb. I'm glad I didn't because that would have been even more money. Um, and he got me in touch with one of his other subscribers um, out there that I could stay with. And um, so that happened. And she and I formed a pretty cool relationship. Um, and so, yeah. So basically, I bought the plane ticket. And, um, and as soon as I bought the plane ticket, things started getting weird. Like he stopped communicating with me and stopped communicating with this other lady. And um, I would like to just put their channels out there because I think that they deserve the recognition. It's Elastic Strength and uh, Strong Spirit Woman, Don and Tracy. They're, they're some wonderful people um, and they deserve a lot of attention. They have um, some great 
thoughts about nutrition and um, getting rid of dogma about it. So I just wanted to give them that. Um, but so we, so she and I were communicating and he just would not communicate with us. It was so hard to get him to communicate. And I remember one night, like he uh, told them basically like to stay up all night in case he was going to show up. Like they offered him a place to stay and she texts me and she's like, well, he might come and he might not. And I just remember like she and I were texting about it and I'm like, like, what's going on here? Like it was, it just started to smell fishy from the very beginning. Then it, two days before I'm supposed to leave, mind you, I take off of work to do this. I'm paying money to go do this. Um, and I take off work, all this stuff. And she, um, two days before I go, I'm about to go to bed and I get a notification in my YouTube and he had just posted a video and it's the video. I think he's taken it down now, of course, but where he's saying that he had nowhere to stay because this, because one of his subscribers bailed. Right. And he's saying we have to wait for the ex vegan from Colorado. Like he also said that he knew for over a week at this point that they didn't know where they were going to stay. He couldn't contact me, couldn't contact me. So I email him. I'm like, Hey, I'm flying out in two days. Like, is this still going to happen? All he says back is, not looking good. And I'm like, dude, I'm coming out there to see you to do this whole thing. Can you please at least communicate with me? <clears throat> and in the back of my mind, and I, and I told this to the lady, I was like, I was like, I guarantee you that the reason <laughs> that he has nowhere to stay is because he's treating this other subscriber just like he's treating us. Like I knew it. I knew it, which ended up being very true. So they're acting like, Oh, we have nowhere to stay. Can someone please stay? Let us stay here. Whatever. So I have no communication from him. So I just decide I'm like, you know what? I'm still going to go. I'm going to enjoy myself. Maybe the whole point was I'm meeting this other couple. They seem really cool. I'm going to go enjoy it. <clears throat> no contact from him whatsoever. I arrive in Arizona. He calls me from somebody else's phone because they don't have cell phones. And I don't know why, but they don't have cell phones. He only emails. I, the, Don and Tracy come pick me up from the airport. <clears throat> he, <laughs> I get a call from an Arizona number. So I'm like, what? So I answer it. Ali, it's me. I'm like, cool. Finally hear from you. And he's like, hey, uh, can we stay there tonight? And um, can, uh, can you come pick us up? Right? Like just, it's all so last minute. Nothing's planned out. He just expects you to take care of him. And so I'm like, uh, sure. And like, so we didn't even know if the interviews were going to happen. They have an acupuncture clinic where they need to take care of patients that day. And he's like, cool. Can we just show up? And also, can you come pick us up? Because somebody had let him stay at their Airbnb. Somebody came through and let them stay there, which is very, very nice. So not everybody in Arizona is an effing a-hole. Um, he actually got very taken care of. So I call a lift because I don't want Don and Tracy to spend more time. Sorry, are we going way over time? But um, so basically I call them a lift. They come to do the interview. As soon as they get there, I mean, it's just the most awkward, unprofessional, unorganized thing of my life. And, um, and I'm trying to like talk to them. I thought we would have good discussions. Luna is very, very sweet, but is it, you can just tell she just follows him around like a puppy dog. Um, and basically we do the interviews. It's super awkward. At one point I was asking him about nutrition. Um, he, he wouldn't answer and basically tells me like, I don't read books and I don't study anymore. Like he verbally said, I don't read books, but after our whole discussion, like he doesn't feel like he needs to do any more research, right? Like he has all the answers. Um, and anytime Don and Tracy brought up anything about nutrition, he would shut it down so hard. Like there's no healthy back and forth discussion. It's like, he is the only, you know, not only are you supposed to just do everything that he wants, but he is the only uh, word of advice here. Um, he didn't want to talk about nutrition. Um, they had jars of honey. They had, um, which I know he eats some honey, but jars of honey, jars of juices, fruit juices, uh, tons of water. I'm like, dude, you say on your channel that you never drink water, you know? Um, Luna was really sick because um, she had, they, they had been eating like all this stuff that had been sitting out for four or five days, um, some beef heart and um, 
like butter and rock kefir and stuff that had been sitting out for a long time. So she was really sick and weak and didn't feel good. And, um, and he just totally ignored her the whole time. Like she kept saying, I'm really, really hungry. And he just stone cold, stone cold. Um, and, and I just remember being really awestruck by their relationship dynamic. It was very, very, very unhealthy. Um, and he just didn't care. Um, and so then, uh, they did the other interview. Um, I left for a little bit. I came back and there was a moment when he was kind of nice. And I do have to say that they did figure out, you know, they stayed and waited it for me in Arizona for four or five days. So, you know, as much as it was a horrible experiment experience, I do have to acknowledge that they did stay and wait for me. Um, even though they put pressure on everybody else. Um, so there was a part of me, you know, they didn't have any food or money or anything. And so I offered, like at one point he said, he was like, so I shouldn't feel guilty that we're, that we're leaving tomorrow. And I was like, no, not at all. And I was so surprised by this moment of sincerity. And I was like, how about the other thing is because of the way I grew up, I'm really attract, I I'm really attracted to this like cult like mindset and um people who are kind of like leaders in that way particularly narcissists and um and I can kind of because of my own trauma go out of body and want to take care of them and so I totally fell back into my old patterning and um I'd also slept two hours the night before so I just wasn't really with it and I and I told them I was like well I would be happy to to take you guys out for dinner and what I meant I said happy to take you to get some food and what I meant is like I was like, we can go to Whole Foods or Sprouts or a butcher and get you some raw meat. That's not what they wanted. So um, that's what I said. And Luna was like, okay, yeah, whatever he wants. Like, sure, that would be great. Again, it was all about him. And so um, so after all the interviews, we're like sitting there and he just starts getting, it was like he was super weird and awkward and then, and not talkative and very, just had this elitist attitude. And then all of a sudden he became like, so snarky like everything he said was a put down and even to the people who are letting him stay like they had clinic they had clients at their acupuncture clinic and he's just demanding this stuff like i need wi-fi and this lady left her phone there while she went and did errands because he needed the hot spot and it was just it just started getting weird and so i and so we were gonna go out we were gonna go get food and um he's just very snarky and he starts filming. And I have to say like, part of me also just wanted to be on camera more, <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to lie. Like I, at this point, I'm like, you know what, this is all, this is also for me to get my YouTube out there. So let's just go with it. So we're about to go to dinner, just he, Luna and I, and we're walking around Phoenix. He's filming and I'm like, okay, what do you guys want to eat? Like, what would you like to eat? And he says, Burger King. And I don't even take that as like a serious comment because why would I take that as a serious comment? It's fair. She only eats raw meat. He doesn't drink water, whatever. And, and at this point, I think he was dead serious. And so we walk around for like 30 minutes and Luna's just like cold and like about to cry and is like all upset and she won't say anything. He won't say anything. Like they're, they just aren't acting like adults at all. And I think it's because they wanted cooked food and they just didn't want to admit it. And so we're walking around. I'm like, you guys, I'm so exhausted. Like, let's just figure out what we're going to eat. Can we please figure out? And he's like, well, I don't know. He, he was being so weird and just like condescending. And it was one of the weirdest situations of my life. So finally, he says, I was like, can we go to a steakhouse? Like, you know, that's what I would like is some steak. Like, maybe you get maybe they'll give it to you rare. And he's like, only if it's a Brazilian steakhouse, which I've never been to a Brazilian steakhouse. I didn't know it's like $60 a plate. And, um, so I'm like, cool, whatever. Like at this point, I'm so done. It's such an awkward situation. And, um, and so I'm like, fine, let's go. And so we're, I lift us to the, I order a lift. We go to the Brazilian steakhouse. Nobody's talking. They don't ask me any questions about myself. They're fighting. Um, he's just totally ignoring her. <laughs> um, and so we go to the steakhouse and I realize on the way there that it's like $60 a plate. And of course he would suggest that, you know what I mean? Like if somebody came to visit me, I would not, if somebody already put out all this money and they were offering to buy me dinner, I would not suggest like a $200 dinner right away. It's just 
so it's so brash and so but it's so in line with everything else that happened we get to the steakhouse i'm asking him questions about nutrition he has no answers um he's telling me uh, some really creepy stuff um makes jokes about coming to colorado and sleeping in my bed i guess they sleep they try to sleep in beds with subscribers it's like it's really strange. And I was like, well, I have cats and he's deathly allergic to cats. And he's like, okay, well we can cook them. And I make this awkward laugh. And Luna's like, no, he's dead serious. And (laughs) it was just like that the whole time. There was no healthy discussion. There was no, they don't care about me. They don't care about anything. Um, They were fighting again. um, And I was trying to intervene. I'm like, I don't even know you people. Um, and at one point I'm like, you know what, I'm going to be spending so much on this dinner and this is so weird. I want to film this, right? Like I want some exposure for my own channel. I asked them if I can film and it was the most awkward five seconds of my entire life. They both just like put their head down. Mind you, he's eating tons of cooked meat down. He downed an entire liter of like expensive still water. And basically they don't, (laughs) it was Aquapana. Yeah. Yeah. Aquapana. Um, and she's eating stuff that's not even that, you know, she's eating some other stuff, but I, you know, she does, that's totally fine. But I was just shocked. I'm like, first of all, this guy's totally using me. He's cutting me down. He's acting like I'm a total idiot. He tried to pressure me into eating vegetables. Like it was, he's like, what, what, you're not going to eat veggies. Like, it's just, it, I have dated a narcissist before and it's like, gaslighting and this like bully mentality where like they just want to constantly they cannot have a they cannot have any real discussion it's like this hurt little boy who has to be the alpha at all times it was just so weird um and yeah so I asked to film and they're just like it's so awkward and I'm like no and he just goes maybe after I eat and I was like I was like, okay, no, it's totally fine. Like, I don't have to film. Like, don't even worry about it. And he gives me this, like, searing look. This searing look where I could just tell. He's like, if you tell anyone. And right after that, like, I've never been looked at like that. It was so weird. And and right after that, he proceeds to tell me about making that Fuck Phoenix video. Right? He's like, I'm going to expose. He's like, how dare these people not take care of me? I'm like... You're at a $200 dinner right now, bro. Like, you know, um, and basically I just got this feeling that like, if I, if I said anything that he was eating cooked meat and drinking all this water that like he would take me down. And again, that was a feeling, but if you had been there, you probably would have felt the same. And when he sees this, he's probably going to say like, oh, she's so fake, whatever. And if you saw the footage, you'd probably think so too. But at that time, like I'm the kind of person, if it's awkward, I will just take over. I will just like I will put the happy face on. I, I was like handling the whole situation because it was so strange. Um, yeah. So that happens at dinner. Luna is like done eating. She like, they like wanted me to Uber them back before the check got there. They joked about dining and dashing. I'm like, we're not all like, I'm going to pay the bill, you know? So it was, it was $200 before the tip. Luna wanted to leave. So we didn't even really eat like an entire dinner. The meat was horrible. It was fogo de chow. I don't know if anyone's been there. It was not that good. It was, it wasn't good at all. <laughs> yeah. I no, I'm like, saying it's not no, good. It's not good. It's not good. I was like, what is this? Um, and, and yeah, and I'm at this point, I'm just so shocked. Um, I mean, and he did say at dinner, he just kept saying really weird stuff, like saying, uh, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to bring this up, but he was just saying, you know, we we're talking about Colorado because I live in Colorado and he's like, yeah, he's like, the only reason I want to come to Colorado is to see Columbine. I'm like, where all these people got murdered? Like, it's just, it was just, it was stuff like that constantly. Talking about a subscriber sending their blood and him drinking it. And I was just so shocked that this guy that I thought was very, first of all, knew a lot about nutrition and intelligent. And I just thought it was going to be a very different situation is, is what I'm trying to get across. And, um, um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get across. And so, uh, we head back to the hotel where, or to the acupuncture clinic where somebody from San Diego is coming to pick him up. So this guy drove like six hours to come pick him up. 
and um and uh they ended up not even staying there because he has such a horrific cat allergy that somehow some some sort of cat got in there he's convinced got into the acupuncture clinic and um and so they convinced this guy to buy them a hotel room for the night this other subscriber and then they drove he drove them all the way back to california and i'm like you know what like jesus and then two days later i'm still in arizona and the fuck phoenix video comes out what what was the what was the i don't understand what was the Did fuck phoenix video about Oh my gosh. It was him saying that everyone in Phoenix and everyone who lives there is an egotistical elitist scumbag because they didn't provide him a place to stay, but they wanted to meet him. Okay. Here's the, here's the truth. On that video, the guy who he was originally supposed to stay with commented and said, yeah, dude, I'm the scumbag. And he says, the F word like a zillion times. He's like, yeah, man, I'm the scumbag because I, you know, because I offered you a place to stay. He basically lines out exactly what happened. And I knew it was exactly what happened. He goes, yeah, man, I'm the fucking scumbag because, you know, I, I offer you a place to stay. You don't communicate with me at all. You show up a week early. You expect me to leave my job, buy you food, um, drop my entire life so that you can come and stay with me. And you treat me like, and you treat me like dirt. And the Dalai Lama isn't that what the Dalai Lama does? What the Dalai Lama? You know who the the Dalai Lama goes around and like they have to feed him and spouse him. I think (laughs) something like that. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean that's how he acts. Like that's what's amazing, and that's why, that's why I want to get this message out there. But. Be, but basically this guy posts everything that happened and guess what that comment got deleted in two seconds i wish i had screenshotted it because because of course like he's not you know he's acting like nobody took care of him and whatever and, and really he screwed over this guy and treated him like dirt and that guy stood up for himself but guess what then happened he got put up in an airbnb i took him to a 200 hundred dollar dinner don and tracy let him stay last minute and this other guy drives from San Diego to pick them up, buys them a hotel room, drives them back to San Diego. I'm assuming paid for food the whole time. But yeah, Phoenix is really horrible. And then I see all these other people on, his, on, on the comments and they're like, God, you're so generous. Like, how could people do that to you? It was probably a vegan. Like, they probably set you up and like all this stupid shit. Like, no, like this guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> He has some good content. I'm not going to, like, that's why I went. And if anything, I'm bashing myself because I'm the one who put myself in this situation. And yes, it has to do with some of my past trauma and me falling into old patterns, sure. But I'm here to say, like, this is me saying, like, and I could get slaughtered for this by a lot of people, but that's how bad this was. And that's how bad I want people to understand that, like, you cannot just blindly follow this dude, okay? You just can't. And it, and he has so much of it ties into all the cult stuff because a, t- he, the classic cult leader, right? Like they have a they have some weird ass awakening, you know, which if you watch his old videos, he did has this awakening, has a couple good ideas. I'm pretty sure all he knows is the Ajanu stuff. And he doesn't seem to be willing to to experiment anymore or research anymore or learn anymore. That's also a terrible For those sign. of you who don't know, that's the John is Vonder Planets made a mm-hmm. book on the raw primal diet, primal body, primal mind. Uh, not primal body, primal mind. Um, uh, John is Vonder Planets book was, what was it? John we want Vonder. to live. We want to live. That was it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure. Book too, recipes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that that's like his whole repertoire. Like, I know he made that New World Order diet documentary, and I really liked the first whole first part of it, you know, with um, Natasha Campbell McBride and all that stuff. But, like, if someone's not willing to learn, that's a scary, that's scary. Um, But, you know, a classic cult leader, they have some awakening, they have some good intentions and some good points. They develop this crazy following. Then they start to become exposed because people begin to understand and people meet him and I'm not going to be one of those people who just like is quiet just to get views and just to be on his channel like it started to just eat me up alive I'm like I cannot be involved with this um yeah they end up getting exposed 
and then they lose their following except for the extremists. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen here. And I'm not here to, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I, I mean, I don't have like, I obviously don't have firsthand experiences with this, but the, you know, you said some things like, uh, you know, you asked him a lot about nutrition and you said he just dismissed it. Like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. you'd ask him like what a question like about, about, I asked him about like parasites and, um, he just goes, they're symbionts and he wouldn't uh, answer anything yeah. else. So, I mean, yeah, like I have a. I have a video talking about parasites where I explain the yeah. various parasites that occur in different types of meat and what the concerns are and what they do in the body. You know, there's definitely, you know, you could you could arguably make an explanation about parasites and then try to argue for his point. But if you he, he just says that they're, you know, symbiotic creatures and that they're supposed to, they're beneficial, that's, you can, you know, you can explain that further. Um, I mean, I guess that's a, so he's, he gives like curt, short responses without really explaining. Yeah. For the he most just, part for the nutrition yeah, stuff. Yeah, he just doesn't want... Yeah, he just didn't want to talk about it. Like, he didn't want to get into it. He didn't want to talk about it. He's like, yeah, I don't read books. Like, I asked him what he thought about um, even, like, some spiritual stuff. And he's like, I don't know. Like, why would you ask me that? And I've had experiences like this with, like, the cult leaders in my church. Like, when you really get in there with them, there's no depth. There's no, like, connection. There's no, um, even without the connection, like, he just... He has like this one, he has just like these one ideas and he obviously doesn't even stick to them. You know, I mean, with all the juice and everything that they had, and I know that they like ate at the Motel 6 the next day and, uh, and Luna was like telling this other lady how much better she felt now that she had some, like some, some food. And, um, I think she needed a little bit of cooked food. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, uh, there was no Don and Tracy would bring up all this different stuff about nutrition and he just, yeah. So he dismissed the stuff about nutrition, but you, you're saying he's, he ate like a lot of, what do you mean by juice? And what do you mean by like, uh, by eating the most stuff? Like, you mean they're eating like cooked food and stuff or. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. At least with me. I mean, and I'm sure, you know, obviously he ate like a bunch of cooked meat at Fogo de Chao. Um, and then when they, when they came to the acupuncture clinic, they had like these big gallons of like orange juice or some other types of juices. He was really concerned about water. Like he was about to make Don go get him more water before they, like we went back after dinner to the acupuncture clinic and he's like, I don't know if we have enough water. And like, is looking at us, like, are we, are you going to go get us water? I'm like, no, I'm not going <laughs> to. Mm, I mean, I don't, I don't know a hundred percent on whether or not he's. Uh, I mean, he advocates a raw, I, I don't really know what he's up to lately. Like, I know he's always advocated a raw diet. I know he's mentioned that he's eaten cooked meat on special occasions and that he mm -hmm. doesn't really drink water, but, uh, I mean, who knows? He does seem to be in that mindset of, you know, not drinking water, only eating raw food and for him to go against that. And I mean, it's not a good look. Um, you know, you know, the main thing is if, if you're going to do something and it's not working for your health then you shouldn't be suggesting it to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, to me, that's a glaring issue. Uh, I personally had problems in the past myself with the raw primal diet. And I noticed that when I was on it, I was craving sugar. I was pr craving calories in general. So to me, there's definitely something to be said about every indigenous group consuming both raw and cooked foods. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to touch on anything else in regards to... Uh, um no i mean i just remember like when we got back he said <laughs> like luna was like i feel bad that you spent so much money on dinner and and i was like well you know i mean i'm looking at it as like you know you get whatever i i explained myself and all he said was well we like it when people like to spend money and the way he said it was just so here's my thing with him it's like if you after my experience with this like i just don't believe that he is quite the person that he says he is and i all i want to do is or i know he's not but i just want to warn the people out there who are following him like me like just do your own research and if like he said he preaches like i'm i'm not you know i'm not a part of the system i don't live in the system like i've been free for seven years from work but like it's everybody else who's working it's that pretty, is supporting him contradictory yeah if he if he was out in the woods making videos and like had made a homestead and was killing his own animals and like all that kind of stuff, I would respect it. But you're traveling internationally with no money and you expect everybody else to take care of you. That's still, that's living off the system, bro. You're still in the system. You're just and taking advantage you, of other people. 
Yeah, and I want to let the new the 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 subscribers who are coming in and who who are who you know because so many people comment they're like, hey, if you ever come here, you always have a place to stay, man. We'll always take care of you, and like just know what you're getting into. Number one, number two, he did get taken care of. I want to defend Phoenix from that video. Like he got super taken care of, and the fact that he didn't even mention that in his videos that shows how ungrateful he really is, and that he'll delete the comments from the people who really know. That's scary stuff. So, again, I just kind of wanted to talk about that. I fell into it because of my own trauma, my own experience. Um, and I think deep down he has some, he has like a part of him that's sincere, but it's become very sick over time. So, um, and I just don't think that, that the nutritional, that he knows very much about it truly. And, and so that's, that's all I wanted to say, I guess. <laughs> well, I didn't really expect that can of worms to open up. So, oh. <laughs> uh, Ali, I'm glad I'm glad you reached out to me. I know this was, you know, I'm sure we could have gone a little bit more in depth with the vegan stuff and shared your vegan stories. But r really, at this point, um, we see a lot of cookie cutter things happen to vegans. You know, it's very similar mm -hmm. things, very similar symptoms, similar outcomes, uh, cult mentality. It's 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 very it's very cookie cutter. It's there's no real deviation in people's vegan experience and then coming back to a regular diet. It's usually almost the exact same story, just different part of the world, different way. They usually similar ways they got into the diet, usually different, you know, the symptoms usually fall in line with gut issues, nutrient deficiencies. And then eventually they go to a doctor, their friends and family, they take them out of it. It's, it's all cookie cutter, all the same story. Uh, but the, the spirit thing is definitely, uh, I mean, that's unfortunate. I know that he, you know, judging from his videos, um, you know, he, he definitely, I, I've seen him do things that are, you know, questionable to some degree, uh, at least in regards to, um, you know, him being with subscribers and just like always asking people for money. That's the only thing I've really noticed and I didn't really give it much credit. Um, and, and I really did have a hard time just believing that someone was able to follow just a raw primal diet for such a long period of time without deviating from it. So I guess that did confirm some suspicions mm -hmm. I had, but, um, uh, I guess I got a little bit of grunt work to do. Uh, <laughs> see well, where yeah. this is. Yeah, and I just what? don't want to see like a bunch of people fall into the same exact trap that they were in in veganism and become this like cult like mentality because that's exactly what he's promoting and that's exactly how he is. And like, there's just the the stuff to back it up is not there. Mm -hmm. Well, so. Allie, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing thank your you. story. Uh, I'm thank glad, you for watching. I'm glad you made me aware of this to some degree. Uh, definitely some consideration. <laughs> so uh, if you guys want to check out Ali's channel, she did make a couple videos on Ali's world. I'm looking forward to seeing those nut job vegan videos she claims she has recorded. Um, <laughs> but if yeah, you guys do want to check out her channel, that stuff's going to be in the description. Uh, from what she said earlier, you're going to be doing videos on cult behavior, narcissism, things like that. Yes, uh, all of it. I want to get into quantum physics, spirituality, um, eating. I want to document what happens on my carnivore journey now so you guys can see. And um, I mean, I want to get into tons of different stuff. But yeah, a lot about breaking out of, of cult-like mentality and dogma. And it's going to be a fun channel. Well, Allie, that so. sounds great. Uh, if you guys <laughs> would like to support the channel anyway, uh, there's mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff in the description from... Uh, my Amazon shop, Patreon, you guys can reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one stuff. All that stuff's going to be in the comments below. Um, but uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week, all right? Thanks, Frank. Bye, guys.